Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that all of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. London Smith. Com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as normocytic anemia and cornholio. So I'll try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Dr. London, we once again have got to get to work. Ah, uh, okay. We have to figure out the Jock Doc University cafeteria okay okay let me explain what we're talking about dr london and i if you've listened the last couple weeks dr london and i have started our own college it is jock doc university the mayor has given us complete power and control and a large amount of cash as well and so we want to do that right and we want to get this thing built from the ground up perfectly and i'm thinking what's a better way to do that both Practically, people got to eat, but also as a way to market ourselves and to attract other people by saying, hey, we've got a kick-ass cafeteria. Right, right. And I, I know I've had so a lot of let's ideas. Let's figure out. Okay, yes, I want to hear okay. some. Uh, so, you know, that sort of in pop culture, this is back in the, the 1900s, uh, they would have this, the ultimate house idea was you'd have a water fountain that dispense soda instead of water, right? Like, oh, I could get a Coke from the uh-huh, water fountain. Sure. So what if we had, yeah. uh, instead of that, we, we had just one that dispensed water that doesn't have lead in it. So that's one idea. Oh, wow. That'll be interesting just because I think a lot of our students will be really used to the taste of lead in their water. Yeah. So, but like, um, and I get that. But the, they, can add, they can add that yeah. themselves if they need to. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, and then also uh, for the fountain. It's interesting. It's, it's provocative. I, I'll give you yeah, that. Yes. Uh, no, I know it's different. It's, it's sort of a retro, but also innovative. And it's, anyway, uh, there's also, um, you know how, like chocolate fountains? Um, uh-huh. What if we had uh, uh, just like Cheerios and, and like sitting in milk fountains? Oh, wow. And it's just shooting Cheerios out of the top of it. Yeah, well, milk. You've got to like catch some in your bowl. Yeah. Milk and che- like it's, it's the Cheerios are getting pre wettened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. I'm honestly thinking, like, why limit it to Cheerios? Maybe all of our food in this cafeteria should be served in fountain form. I'm thinking, like, on Chili Dog Day, you've got one of these chocolate fountains that's shooting hot chili onto this sort of, like, sea of drowning hot dogs. I've always liked when places like a hotel or whatever has, like, an omelet bar. Right, right. But I don't really eat omelets yeah but i do drink you know what i mean yeah but i do drink omelets and so if i could get just sort of a raw egg bar where i could get just raw eggs raw bacon raw uncooked sausage uh just all of it just sort of blended up into a cup and then maybe an iv that then taps into my arm and i can just shoot that bad boy straight into my system yeah for the protein. Well, and I, I guess separately, I would also like to just, because you're going to get salmonella anyway from this. Uh, j- and like, that's. If you're, if you're at our school, you're, you're, you're gonna you've get already it. got yeah. salmonella. Like that's just, yeah. there's no question about that. Yeah. You have to get vaccinated and you also have to get salmonella. Like that's just a part of getting to the school. So. Yeah. It's not a requirement. It's just going it's to It's going happen. to happen. Yeah. That's, that's the demographic we uh, procure so uh yeah i i think that um yeah so i sorry i was uh so we'll have bottled i guess we'll just line everything with salmonella i'm trying to think of the best way to to just reinforce it because you don't if we run too low on it i do i'm afraid that some salmonella will take over against the other salmonella so I, I would suggest we just have a fountain of it, just like a chocolate fountain, but we have a salmonella yeah. fountain. I'm just afraid probably that, like, the easiest way people be over it. But yeah, yeah, okay, we can try that. And then uh, for th- for the, all the the egg drinking and everything, we should have uh, some videos of 
whatever Rocky movie, I think that's originally like, that's what it's famous from. Uh, some clips of that, but then mm-hmm. somehow make it satirized like him. Dr- and then like him drinking it. Give and him then, sadder eyes. Yes. Cause Stallone has some of the saddest eyes I've ever seen. Yeah. We need like the cartoonish, like the, the anime style where there, there's a big underline in the eye. Big tear. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, I was, I'm going to, I don't know how to vocalize animated, but you, for the listeners, uh, uh the, what, what I, what I'd be trying to say. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like cartoon stuff. Yeah. So and now I'm sense. thinking I would also love at the end of the line, once I get to the end of the line, I've got all my food on my tray. I've visited the E. coli or the salmonella fountain. Maybe the E. coli fountain too. I visited the cor- the chili dog fountain and the egg swirling station. Now I need to get a toy. Because this is something that when I was in college, I was so used to, okay, well, whenever mommy and daddy take me to get my daily food, I always get a like a usually some sort of a plastic toy with it. That's right. Yeah. And can and I say sometimes are, they're so against these microplastics. If we get these macroplastic toys, okay, then you won't be tempted to eat all the smaller plastic toys. Yeah, exactly. Just have them big enough where I can't choke on it. I, I'm going to chew on it a little bit, but where yeah, I can't little, fully yeah. swallow it. So I'm only ingesting a little bit of the plastic. That's right. Yeah. But sometimes it'll be Toy Story stuff, or sometimes it'll be like Finding Nemo stuff, um, or maybe even Pokemon every once in a while. But yeah. just every day I want a little toy because otherwise I can't eat my meal. Yeah, well, it's like, why do it if there's not going to be a prize at the end? Yeah. Um, I would say one more thing we definitely have to do is actually name the cafeteria. Like, we should name it, like, to honor someone. You know, a lot of colleges, their wings and their different buildings. Yeah. Um, who do we, I mean... Uh, I, I had an uncle who I'm actually, like, really, like, who I kind of look up to. Um, yeah, Santa. But, yeah, Santa. Uh, so... Santa, do you want to just call it Santa's Workshop? Santa's Workshop, the cafeteria. Yeah. Santa's Workshop, colon, the cafeteria. Or comma? Do we want comma or colon? Santa's Workshop, the cafeteria. Um, Hyphen? How Dash? about like, how about like Santa's Workshop, like the final destination? Right, just because I feel like cafeteria is such a boring word. If we're gonna give it a title, let's like actually name it like a movie title. Okay, I and just to just throw out another option here, I'm thinking in terms of branding. If this turns into a franchise, what if we called it the Malnourishment Cafeteria? Because um, I do feel like that that has some staying power. If we wanted to open up multiple, just an option for. I don't know, I'm I'm thinking more five ten years down the line whenever we encounter success with this, but. Sure, yeah. Um, okay, so then along those same lines, Skinny Santa's Summer um, Shit House. Yeah, okay. Wow, okay. And then um, let's see. Oh, most important, at least I think, for the end of a meal, we need to have the nap time room, which will be adjacent to the cafeteria, I assume. Um, just Right, yeah. A place with some some mats, bed, and like and and condoms, like yeah. Because I mean, especially after you've had these chili dogs and this like raw eggs and meat kind of blended up, you're gonna be like so horned up that like you and your buddies that go back there, yeah, you want you want protection. I get it. Not even your butt, you know. Like it's yeah, you're you're filled to the brim with salmonella and E. coli. You're something's coming out of every end and something's gotta give yeah yeah and uh better if one of those ends has protection you know what i mean so yeah i get it i get it yeah uh well i, I think we did it right yeah we've got the yep jock Doc university cafeteria will be opening this fall hopefully the skinny santa summer house summer shit house cafeteria yes <laughs> And later we have uh, really a 
today we're doing more of a design focus, okay? We're going to teach you how to do, how to make something that uh, in these current days, politically, climate-wise, well, climate change and everything, this climate in multiple senses, you really can do without. So uh, look forward to that. But before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. For a long time, our listener demographic was primarily composed of ants. So hordes of ants. Great listeners, but terrible managers of piles of sugar. I, and I cannot emphasize this enough. Whenever we hired ants to watch our piles of sugar, they... I, like, I, I don't, like, a lot of times they didn't even seem to eat them. They just took the sugar away. It was definitely more of a power move, yeah. Um, so, so that's who used to be a listener demographic, but we've lately had a lot more bot downloads, a lot, a lot of bot listeners. So this is us trying to appeal to them a little bit more. So one of those comes from TikTok. This is a comment on our response to uh, Quality is Amazing, Keep It Up. At XT Chorus said, quote, This can blow up indefinitely. Y'all are hilarious crying laughing emoji end quote so thank you so much for this feedback so, so this is the third bomb threat we've received this week um and i don't look and, and i love it when people say like oh this can blow up because sure i like to know the chemistry of things i like to know what can cause a combustion reaction but but what you're trying to say us, is we fold. Yeah, like, we'll give in to your demands. Just tell us. Yeah. When I um, read a comment like this, like, you're going to blow up. I'm leaving something in your car. Uh, yeah. You know, be ready to blow up tomorrow. You know, if you see, like, any sort of thing that's beeping in your house, don't touch with it. Don't mess with the wires. Whenever I get these kind of messages. Yeah. um, I don't know. I just, I get a little excited. I, yeah, no, for, for me, I, I become a little bit hesitant. Okay, because in part, like, I, sure, I've worked on diffusing bombs before, okay? Sure, I've, I've played around with that. Cut the green wire, cut the blue wire, cut the green and blue wire? <laughs> but you can understand, like, I'm terrible with colors. Well, and that's why I'm saying what I'm excited to do is, Dr. London, is give in to their demands. So this commenter, whatever demands you're demanding um, to, to not blow us up, uh, we'll give them to you. And that includes Dr. London. Dr. London, we can give him, we can give you him for the weekends. Yeah. You can have my... Dr. London for every single weekend as long as you just don't blow us up. Just, just, just disarm the bomb now. And then you could have Dr. London. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Weekends and Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just trying to think of I. Yeah, I guess I didn't have plans, did I? <sighs> oh, you mean on weekends or Tuesdays or Thursdays? Or Tuesdays, Thursdays? No, I, I looked didn't at your schedule and yeah, it seemed like weekends, yeah. especially, and then especially Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's not a single thing planned. Um, I'd say Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays 20s. and Saturdays. Yeah. It says you you have a dentist appointment on a Tuesday in 2037. But I can reschedule that if I need yeah, to. Yeah, might want to might want to jot that down. But okay. thank you to this listener. Please please yeah, don't blow so us up. I hope I hope we answered your question there. Uh let's see. This next comment this comes from TikTok. It's a comment on our response to Grimace Shake. Uh at Nick uh, A H B I T said quote Opinion on fat balls, end quote. So thank you so much for this feedback. So, so, so that's a tumor. The, the fat, but that's a tumor. Yeah, this is something that Dr. London has taught me. Um, after Dr. London sort of inspected his own stuff, he kind of realized through science that if someone's stuff down there is too big, um, you know, like, that's a disease, actually. So, like, sometimes you'll see things on these, you know, on pornography, like on these inappropriate videos and stuff where these guys have these, like, very large areas down there. That's a tumor. That's not good. It's actually really bad to be like that. And we've, we've spent hours just combing through these because I, I wanted to be sure. 
Um, oh yeah. So we we went through so many of these videos, and we I I kept pausing it, circling. Like, okay, camera, you see how it's these are bigger than they're supposed to be. That's bad. Right. And I would go try to look these guys up on IMDb. Usually, they weren't even on there. Yeah. Uh, and I but I try to track these guys down and tell them like, hey, I'm kind of worried for you. Uh, like you should come into I'm. I'm, a, I'm trying to drum up business as well, but I'm like, you should come to my office and you know, I'll try to, I guess, cut it off, whatever, whatever parts. So Dr. Lennon has, has assured me because he, you know, he, you've looked at your own stuff and you've said, okay, the, obviously this is what's normal. The human, the human male penis should be roughly the size, shape and curvature of an Arby's curly fry. Yeah, I mean, not like, uh, not that, like, a curly fry is obviously very big, and it's, like, kind of scary, but yeah, like, roughly that. Um, Very springy, coiled up. Yeah. And yeah, I guess a little bit smaller and skinnier, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, like, first, like, yeah, obviously not to scale, but yeah, uh, like a 90% of that, so... So I guess to answer your question, how do we feel about fat balls? We love them because that means you have a tumor and Dr. London's going to make some money because he's a doctor. Big pharma, bitch. So thank you so much for that feedback. I hope we answered your question. Um, This next one is from TikTok. This is a comment on our response to what is happening RN? Three crying emojis, two skull emojis, end quote. Uh, So this is from at Cayman. 879 they said quote i'm pregnant and it's yours end quote wow uh so th- thank you so much for this feedback uh, i'm gonna I, go I, ahead and guess this is sort of aimed at me dr london yeah well because i don't know i i know our listeners were gonna be a mom but i didn't well, know that you were i i would have been waiting pregnant. for this day we so we have a Patreon that uh, you guys can listen to and you can watch the videos of our podcast and all that kind of stuff. But we did add the sort of Cameron's sperm tier of the Patreon. If you gave us 75 bucks, um, you would get sort of a vial of kind of my sperm. I, you know, I, I just thought this was a normal like podcast gift to hand out. I, you I'd, know. Say, I'd say, and just, to, just to clarify, like we, we get it out surgically. Oh, Cameron yeah. doesn't like do anything to like we we remove it laparoscopically. Yeah, it's just squeezed just out to like toothpaste. Yeah, no one like it's not fun or feel it feels no. terrible. No, it's Cameron's awful. screaming the whole time. Yeah, and that's the whole thing is that like a the Patreon tier should be a punishment on us. Like you're giving money in order to sort of torture us in this way. Um, but I. I've been waiting for the day where one of these is going to bite me in the ass. And so it sounds like I have a kid on the way. Um, I'll tell you right now, you know, enjoy the kid. I, I you know, obviously I'm not going to be in, in the mix or anything. Um, I will say in terms of childbirth, you do need to give birth in the middle of Kansas. That's where all Clarks are. That's my, my name. Class name is Clark. That's where they are all born. And if they are not, then they have, sort of a danger of becoming a werewolf-like creature, but it's not so much of a wolf. It's more of like a, I don't know, like a bull. Claustrophobic. Like, a, like, it's just a claustrophobic creature, right? Like, that's yeah, like it's not a it's whole so, lot of physical properties was, as much yeah, as it is anxiety. It's, it's essentially just a really, really scared gremlin. It's just a gremlin that sucks. You know how the gremlins are, like, kind of fun? This gremlin sucks ass and is extremely afraid of everything and hates uh, being in enclosed spaces and hates spaces that are too open. Yeah. So just or really exclosed. full of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it, and just to say, like, to know you're in the center, the very center of Kansas, uh, you'll go out with a compass and it's when the compass starts spinning, the needle starts spinning a bunch. Um, you'll know you're dead center. Uh, and then also, if there's a guy there whose compass is also spinning, you have to fight him, but, like, he's going to be stronger than you. Um, and if he wins, he's your baby now. 
Yeah, and so so you'll have so two the baby, children at that point. The baby becomes him, and then he becomes your baby. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for that feedback. Um, let's see. We have one more here. This is a comment on TikTok. A comment on response to yo at x e m a x a m u s at Maximus. Uh, they said, "quote." You kind of look like Shaq. You ever get that? End quote. All right. So thank you so much for this feedback. And uh, yes, this, I think this listener is referring to the time when it looked like we almost had Shaq on the podcast. Yes. We, Shaq has sort of been the white whale of this podcast and he was in the studio once on one of our most famous episodes of the show. Um, but we unfortunately could not get to him. And then I believe he ran off and maybe up a mountain or something. Yeah, it's tough to tell because, uh, and here's something that a lot of people don't realize about him. This is once you're in the studio with him, you start to notice he's kind of tall, like pretty, like taller than me. Um, and I'm, I'm above average height, I think. Yeah, he now we should we should clarify he's not as tall as he looks on TV because it, you know it's like pro wrestlers like they exaggerate those numbers. Oh, basketball yeah. players, they're blah blah. You know, Shaq is five nine, but when yeah. like that's still pretty dang tall. Like he's taller than like Daniel Radcliffe. He's taller than Tom Cruise. Oh uh, my gosh, yeah. He's uh he's taller than the the guy who played Mini Me. Um. He's taller than, uh, I'm trying to think of another, uh, the, the animated, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep. That. The Gremlins. Uh, the, the Gremlins, yeah. Uh, so ju- just for these, this ratio, like, these are all, we all think of all these characters as being pretty yeah. tall, but Shaq is actually taller than them. Because our, uh, you know, our podcast studio is built for guys like Dr. London and I, who are, you know, four foot seven. Yeah. You know, just like kind of a normal average height. Above and then you've got this huge height, yeah. just shack coming like, oh, fee five oh mm-hmm. fum. Just yeah. sort of like, I'm a five nine uh, giant, son. That's yeah. what he said to us when he came in. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was Love a really that good quote. time. So that's probably when you said uh, we look like Shaq, that's probably what you're thinking of was that yeah. episode from three years ago. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for that feedback. I hope that answered your question. And we, we look forward to hearing from you again about this. Now for uh, today's medical topic, simple renal cysts. Simple renal cysts are very common, uh, with half of the population over the age of 50 having them. And incidence increases with age. Uh, sim- simple renal cysts may be, and sorry, renal, that refers to the kidneys, okay? So these are cysts in your kidneys. They may be single or multiple, usually asymptomatic, and discovered incidentally on abdominal ultrasound or other imaging study. So no treatment is necessary in most cases. This is um, basically, it's, it's something to know to not freak out about, okay? Simple renal cysts, usually not a big deal. So d- don't even have to treat them. Well, I mean, and, you know, just because, like, they're simple right now, that doesn't mean they can't be trained and become more complex. Because I, right now I'm worried that our audience is like, well, I don't want this, like, you know, this kind of dumb, simple, like, easy little thing on me. Let's add some education. Yeah. yeah, let's add some education in this mix. Let's actually make this simple being a little more complex. Well, well and here, here's what I worry about. It, it, the more complex it is, the more I fear that it will learn that it's merely a, a little spot in one organ in your body. You're afraid of sentience. An or- yeah. Yeah, simple renal sentience. That does That is always a concern, Dr. London, but you've got to al- I- also let the cyst make that decision for itself. Once it gains well, sentience. Because that's, that's like saying, okay, let's watch Terminator again. And let's see, okay, they have to let AI do the thing. And they have to let Elon Musk make Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, what I'm saying is, like, m- maybe we don't. And maybe we go back and get uh, Connor to not uh, have a robot. You know what I mean? I guess my only problem with that is... 
like then the stuff that I was just saying doesn't work. Uh, okay, and you'd be wrong. Yeah, which is if I'm kind right. of my podcast, which would be kind of rude for you to do. Okay, yeah. Um, so if you want to apologize real quick, and then we can just sort of wrap this thing up. Yeah. No, I I guess I because I don't want to hurt your feelings, which I think are they're tenuous, especially if you see weakness in yourself or your arguments. So yeah, uh, I, I'm, I am sorry for, Oh, my feelings are gone. They've been obliterated at this point. Oh, the cyst. Okay. I mean, they've been beaten down. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So that, the, the, uh, and, and here we go. All right. So today, <laughs> today we're going to talk about, um, something that we, Everyone's been thinking about, but no one's been talking about. It's the elephant in the room. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not literally, okay? Uh, no, don't be worried, especially if you're like a little scaredy cat or something, or if you're a yeah. teeny tiny little mouse, don't well, be afraid. Yeah, yeah. And like uh, that whole, the ivory trade, we're not allowed any, that's, that's, that's done. We said we're done with that. Um, no, this is uh, getting a bomb shelter and... Not just getting one, okay? Because we know in the Cold War times, uh, all of our Zoomers and Alphas will know that back in the Cold War, um, people liked to build bunkers and bomb shelters because they thought uh, that just Russia was going to bomb us. Now we know that, and sorry, by us, I do mean everywhere that's not, and also including Russia. Um, now we know that every country is going to do it. And so... Um, we have to build a little bit differently with, with this in mind that you can't just plan on one direction for, for a thing to hit your, your bunker. So, um, so, so we have some designs. Did you say, did you say the word bunker or bomb shelter? Both. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bomb shelter is the word that I, I guess both, both are going to be applicable, but bomb shelter is the one that I'll use in the title, I think. <laughs> We're we're building uh, into the world safety space. Yes, yes, and I know what you guys are thinking. Like, oh, your millennial safe space, <laughs> and uh, for, like one section. Yes, will be that. Um, so the floor plan. Uh, I get. I guess we'll start. There will be a door to get into it. I think that's. That that they do that. Normally. Number one would be a door to. To get into it now, do we want to decide this bunker is this underground or above ground? Uh, okay, this is there's a money saving technique here. It's like an above ground pool situation. Uh, okay, so let's let's give the option. Okay, if you get an above ground bunker, it's slash bomb shelter slash millennial safe space, you're gonna want to get one that's uh, I guess I guess can turn into a boat probably, right? probably yeah i think either way you want something that will turn into a boat when you need it okay yeah so regardless of which one you'll want a propeller on it uh and on the back of it and um if you know about wind and not everyone does then go ahead and get some sails put on there as well so and that's that's pretty good that's to furnish the outside of it um and then, uh, so, and uh, for, for the above ground or below, once again, I think you're going to want a door to get into it. Some kind of a passageway. You're going to want a door and you're going to want one of those like airtight chambers thingies or whatever, where you can like change in and out of clothes when you're dealing with the poisoned sky outside. Now, you've probably seen that in sci-fi movies and stuff like that. That doesn't actually exist. What does exist is a hose. You can have a hose with water and maybe a bucket and maybe a sponge. Okay, but this is, I, I want to just warn everyone right now, there will be a dog trying to chase the spray of the hose, trying to huh, bite it, okay? Yeah, not in like a, like a scary way, like in a funny way, like it's trying to play. Yeah, uh, and this is going to be, like, this doesn't go away whenever the world is, you know, blown up with a nuclear weapon. You're going to keep having dogs getting in the way. Like, you're just trying to use the hose to, you know, wash off radiation or whatever. But the dog is going to keep trying to play with the thing. Okay? So, 
Yeah. You're going to have. And that's just one of the side effects of this new world we live yeah. in. Just loose dogs everywhere. And in particular, this one dog that sort of lives in that little yeah. in between space, in between the outside door and the entrance. Yeah. And you may own it or you may not. And at, at this point, also, like I would say, like, what is ownership? You know? Because the world is gone. At this point, ownership as a concept has gone out the window. Yeah. Anything you see outside is both yours and not yours. Yeah. It's sort of a paradox. Which is also another point here. Uh, it's why the dog technically can own the bomb shelter. No one owns it, but you both have equal claim to it. So Yeah. And this is why it's important when you're hosing yourself off when you're coming back inside to spend a little bit of time playing with the dog and letting the dog kind of snap at the hose because other di- otherwise if the dog you know is no longer content the dog will claim ownership of that area and then you have to pay a toll anytime you want to come through it which is not going to be cheap yeah and it'll usually be in well you already know the dog likes water so and water is going to be a limited resource so just imagine the amount of water that you're going to have to use on playing with the dog in the future just to make up for the times you didn't Right. You're already wasting so much just spraying yourself down with this hose and then also playing with the dog and, you know, playing any games you want with your friends or whatever. Yeah. Um, that you're not going to want to be wasting even more with extra time playing with the dog. So it's just easier to just spend like three, four minutes real quick. Um, I would say, okay, once you get into the bunker, so like past the door, past this section. You definitely need to think about the pantry because this is where all the food is going to go. That's going to keep you alive. And can I say, sorry, can I say now the pantry isn't a tree where pans go. Okay. <laughs> it's, can you, I, can you imagine? I, well, I just like in the future, I don't know if they'll be able to tell that if the, yeah, I just, like, I don't, I just, I don't know. Like we're trying to predict the future here. Right, that's essentially what we are futurists. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Like, as funny as it sounds to us right now, I don't know what's funny to them. Like, their sense of humor could be completely different. So, the pantry. Oh, wow. So, yeah, in that case, uh, the pantry is a tree with pans, right? Because maybe their sense of humor go, like, is yeah. goes the opposite. Should we have a joke book there so that they, like, know, like, so that they get what we're into? Yeah, let's put a joke book in there. I would say also, now that we've said it a bunch of times, let's have a tree that has a bunch of pans in it. Yeah, okay. And that'll be like what they used to cook. Um, so so I guess leading up to just leading up to the time whenever you are like you've already built this, uh, like maybe two decades before, maybe three, you need to learn to genetically modify a tree to 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 have um pans as its fruit okay oh wow yes just sort of a growing growing pan situation yeah just um that would that would make the the joke a reality but practical and simpler um yeah i feel like that that covers it right This also opens up room to make jokes about growing pains, sort of as a play on growing pains. Yes. Growing pans, growing pains. Right. So, oh, call me Kirk Cameron, I'm heading to the the growing pans. Right, right. And we'll have to, I guess, include episodes of that. We'll have to include some DVDs of that, yeah, for them to understand the joke in the future. On the other side of the pantry, that'll be on the left side, on the right side is the pantry. Right. Yes. And this is where you're actually storing all of your food. Now, there's only really one food that is going to be able to survive a post-nuclear world. Mm-hmm. N- and what is it? Because I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's gumdrops. Okay, that's what I was... Th- I was really hoping it was gumdrops, because that's what I've been collecting for a long yeah. time now. Yeah. No, I, for a little bit, I wasn't sure. I thought jelly beans, but gumdrops, as it turns out. Now, I... I don't know if I could pick out which candy is a gumdrop, just like looking at candies in a candy store. Um, okay. I yeah. I feel like, they are they like warheads? No, I think they're gummier than warheads. Okay. Oh, that yeah, with the name, yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess we should have a, 
a book. They look sort of, they're sort of like a gummy treat that looks sort of like the human nipple. Are you familiar with the human nipple? Uh, so what? So you remember Sarah? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she one time like told me that like if I played my cards right, which I did not get what she meant by that. She, but she said like she had this this novel that's like all about like these two people like getting close and then she said she'd let me read that if i bought her uh ticket to the show to go with this other guy um and right uh, if you paid for to to pay for their date she would let you have this nipple dictionary yeah uh, but like it turned like the so they did mention a nipple once but like they really just kind of in passing so i guess, I guess short answer no i don't know about a nipple um Okay. So it's well, a gumdrop. It's going to be really hard to describe gumdrops. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I just, I guess we'll have um, uh, maybe a photo of a gumdrop. That ideally, we'll have a stash of gumdrops there. But um, if not, then certainly like a maybe a book on how to harvest them, or identify them in a lineup. Um, because once again, I can't. Yeah, do that. I mean either. Because, yeah, I don't know if it's meat or a vegetable, but either growing them or killing them. Yeah. Whatever you have to do. Yeah. Okay. And that's... Uh, um, and the, yeah. nec- the next space is the exercise space. Yes. This is an extremely important space because you need to stay strong to deal with all the people who have been turned into real huge meanies. No one, no one is going to be turned into a mutant, per se. No, like, no, like, no zombies, any of that. No. We don't... We don't live in a cartoon, no. but people are going to be pissed as hell because like their house is gone. They don't have a bunker quite as good as you. Their dog is stuck in your, in your little four year well, area. And you, you did, you went and found all of their sort of agricultural spaces on the surface and sprinkled a lot of uh, salt on them so that nothing would ever yeah. grow there again. So right. they, and that wasn't my motive. By the way, I just wanted saltier veggies. Yeah, and by the way, pretty salty, right? Yeah, I would assume so. I don't really. Yeah, eat you don't eat that veggies. Much, but... Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, but yeah, so um, so they're gonna be mean about just from stuff like that, like from from your preferred dietary uh, restrictions and all that. Most of this bunker stuff is their stuff that you took. They're also kind of pissed about that. Yeah, and. Um, the you'll you'll notice in sorry the exercise room of course it gets but also the room next to it is the family room and their family is in there in that oh right yeah and you're making too much noise yeah so uh but yes yeah, so, sorry let's get back to the exercise room the type of exercise you'll have to have to stay i, I believe that the up and coming term would be swole that's that's the term that uh gen alpha is using now um, so t- to get swole, you'll have to use d- d- exercise, okay? And that includes you need a punching bar. A lot of a lot of times you'll see in these movies like Rocky, these kind of like just like weak ass movies where people are like, "Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna punch this like cushioned thing. I'm gonna punch a punching bag." That's not gonna help you in this new reality, in this new normal. No, d- you need a punching bar. That's a huge metal bar that you punch as hard as you can. Yeah, and um, so and with that, you're gonna want uh, an uh, some splints and just a bucket for the blood, because you're gonna split open your hand, um, and there's gonna be a lot, a lot, a lot of blood, and uh. Also important, um, and ideally you're a medical doctor with the expertise. You're going to want to go ahead and type in cross uh, so to find matching blood donors, um, which is why you, why you captured the family that's in the living room. Um, you, you need your blood, boys. No, but don't, don't throw away the, the blood in the bucket, though. Like, yes, you're going to take the additional blood from your blood, boys. But the blood in the bucket, don't just toss that out because that can be used on the pan tree. Once, like once you have like whatever witchcraft you need, that blood is going to be part of that recipe. Yeah, yeah. 
to then pour that on the tree, and that's going to allow the tree to actually grow. Yeah, bananas. and a, a, a helpful reminder reminder for that is the tree will speak to you and demand the blood. Um, if you, oh God, well, yes. yeah. What's great is that just like a dog will not shut up yapping in the morning to wake you up, you'll have a tree physically moving to you, uh, and getting a little bit angry. Feed me the blood. Get, yeah. Feed me the blood. And you're like, oh Feed me tree. The blood. Feed me the blood. Pantry, tree, then yeah, you'll uh, you'll you'll scarf down that that blood pretty quick, and, and it's like I don't know, it's kind of cute how you you've developed sort of this family down there, don't you? And it's not conventional, right? No, but this is the new normal, you know. Yeah. Not, it, you know, mixed families. Yeah. It's a, sometimes it's a mom and a dad and a tree that needs blood. And your blood boy. And the dog who owns the place. And the dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Sometimes that's a family. Yeah. And uh, I guess, let's see, the other room, you'll have, you forgot to put a bedroom in. So that's that's kind of a downer. Um, you, you forgot that. Yeah, you sleep, you sleep next to the big bar in the gym. Yeah, and the lights are bright and fluorescent in there, so you do not sleep well. Uh no. There's also like you th- whenever you were putting this gym together, you thought like, oh, let's make it like Planet Fitness. So there's a th- I don't know if you, for those who don't know, there's a lunk alarm. There's an alarm that goes off anytime someone like does exercise, and so that goes off every two to three seconds while you're in there. Um, it'll just blare at you, and it's lights and sounds, and. uh yeah, so that'll you won't sleep in the future. Ooh, the future. Uh, that yeah. sleep will be a thing of the past. And also, your crush is at the gym, and so if you do any of your exercises poorly, or if you cry when you punch the bar, your crush is going to see that. Yeah. Um, and she's she's a- they're just in the gym constantly working out, like judging how you're working out. Yeah, and you. You know you don't really have a chance with her. She's already told you. No, God. She's, yeah. Like, Post-apocalypse. She's like, I'm just here to work yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. She's got her headphones in. And every time you say, like, excuse, hey, excuse me, she takes one headphone out for, like, a second and then puts it back in, like, looks at her watch. Like, she does not look at you when she takes yeah. it out. Like, you, you'll be like, hi, good, good to see you today. Yeah. And then she just kind of gives you a nod, but isn't even making eye contact. Yeah, like, yeah it's, it's like rolling her eyes over you, uh, which like she's so she's so funny for that. And she's so cool. She's yeah. No, she's great. And like, hopefully you'll find an excuse to hang out with her later. Uh, but like she... Like she's well, she's just been busy because I I keep asking her like, hey, let's go over to the pantry, yeah, and um, we can hang out by the tree and talk to the tree, and maybe get some gumdrops. But she's always like, oh, I really can't. I got to work out right now. But like, yeah, okay. But like you see, and like this isn't a criticism of her, but like you see at the gym, she's really just on her phone a lot, like not even working out that much like she's sometimes she'll she'll take a video of whatever of her working out but mostly she'll be like chatting with someone like video chatting with and you can't tell so, sometimes it, the camera will be the phone will be turned towards you a little bit so you can see like there's another guy but you really can't yeah, tell it's a really strong guy he looks really strong and he keeps you can hear on the other side he's like is that creep at the gym still bothering you yeah and it's only you down there, you and your blood boys. So it's like, okay, it has to be the blood boys that are bothering her. I'll say the blood boy is pretty charming. Um, so it's really hard to qualify him as a creep. Uh, like compared to you. Yeah. The blood boys actually like got a lot of street cred. Um, well, no, because I think she's gonna come around to me. I think she's gonna. I think she's gonna. She's gonna like me. Eventually. Yeah, it's 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 the fact that she hasn't like had a chance to see, you know, because uh, you're always saying like, man, above ground boy. I'm I'm really different. I'm I've actually got it together. Oh gosh, I look so I look so much better above ground. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, in, in the case of an above ground bunker thing, uh, you'll say the same except for below ground, um, or in the open air. Like if if you've ever seen sunlight, then oh wow, it's really. You're what you're trying to say is if we were anywhere else, I would look a lot better. Yeah, 
but uh it's just we happen to be in the worst spot like yeah. i look the worst here right now that's why i look so yeah. bad and then sh- she like and like 10 years down the line you might be able to get a chance for her to like do a selfie with you but because you've worked up an excuse over a 10 year period that's sort of this creative construction project uh and you're like oh let's test out this selfie thing but um then the whole you're going to you're going to blow it because she's going to get an angle that you know looks bad for you. Oh, yeah. Awful. And it's because there's no good Triple angle. Triple chins. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Lots of oil on your face. Yeah. Sweat, sweat in your pit. And like, and you're going to throw up a little bit. So, um, so that's, that's the bomb shelter. Uh, trying to think, is there any detail we missed? I feel like we covered most of the bomb shelter. Mm, maybe like a craps table. Craps or crafts? Well, I Arts can't and? be both. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, one one in the morning, the other in the evening. Yeah. Arts and craps. Uh so you'll and I say craps, we don't mean restrooms. You don't get to have a restroom. Um No, there's no restroom. That's what like the tree is for. Yeah. You gotta like fertilize it's asking for poop and blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, it, but it'll be uh, you'll play craps. Uh, so you'll have dice and, um, and for for the arts, you'll uh, you'll try to paint, but you'll become pretty critical of yourself, and uh, you'll you'll like have a little art exhibition, and uh, the girl your crush will not show up, and no, she doesn't. She won't. She'll. She really. She says like she's really gonna try to make it. Yeah. Or that's what you've inferred. Like she didn't really she won't say talk that. To you. Yeah. She just sort of went like, okay, yeah, sure. But you've sort of took that as, oh, she might actually come to this. Yeah. Thing. And uh, and like you've you've got a lot of stuffed animals that you've made to put up and like be in the the audience for you. Uh, but even they seem pretty upset by the art. And like you realize part of the way through, like this is pretty morbid stuff. Um, I think I was channeling something darker here and maybe I need to go to therapy. So yeah, it's like butts and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so that's how to build a bunker. That's how to build your bomb shelter. Um, and, uh, honestly, like any more tip, this is just because we're going into the new school year. These are things that you're going to need to know. Um, and also because of the apocalypse that's on the way. So, uh, thank you to our producer, Cameron. Thank you to digital in the house. 